Welcome to No, I'm Ryan Haywood, and apparently the only one that showed up to work today, so this is a roundup. Uh, it only took them a couple of weeks after lawsuits and YouTube scandals started popping up, but Valve has finally responded to the numerous allegations about their connection to Counter-Strike global offensive gambling sites. In a blog post yesterday, the company outlined a firm position on gambling, stating, there's been some false assumptions about our involvement with these sites. We'd like to clarify that we have no business relationships with any of these sites. We have never received any revenue from them. The company went on to state that they will now be sending notices for gambling sites to stop using their API and will pursue other actions as necessary. They even warned players that they should be careful with their Steam inventory in light of this news. Considering how much the excitement around skins and gambling helped build up the CSGO community, it'll be interesting to see how this affects the population long term. No matter how much they insist they didn't receive direct revenue from gambling, they certainly rode that wave as long as they could. Uh, Nintendo announced a brand new console today, coming out this November, and no, it's still not the NX, sorry. However, it is a mini NES, and it sounds like a actually pretty sweet deal if you're itching for some retro goodness. Uh, the super small NES Classic Edition fits in the palm of your hand and costs about 60 bucks. It comes preloaded with 30 games. Uh, a list of games isn't really actually half bad either. It's, I even recognize many of them. Uh, there's uh, three Super Mario Brothers games, Bubble Bobble, Castlevania, Castlevania 2, Psych Bite, Final Fantasy, Mega Man 2, Metroid, Legend of Zelda, Tecmo Bowl, Punch-Out, Kid Icarus, and Super C. So. Just about everything worth playing on the classic Nintendo anyway, let's be honest, except maybe the secret. Uh, yeah, no, it's good. Uh, no word on whether or not you'll be able to download any additional games for the system once it's released, but this is Nintendo we're talking about, so eh, probably not. It's like a chip, no hard drive. That's just my assumption. Uh, the classic edition releases on November 11th, just in time to get buried by all the other games that you'll be buying for the holidays. One weekend, Pokemon Go, already selling out. Uh, according to the New York Times, Niantic is pursuing sponsored locations for Pokestops and Pokemon Gyms within the game, which can be paid for by businesses who want to be featured. That shouldn't be too big of a surprise. It's not only an opportunity for easy money, but it was also something the company's previously done in uh, Ingress. Uh, no word on when this feature would be coming, but one Australian gamer and some others on Reddit have poured through the de decompiled code for Android version of the game to find references to McDonald's. So it seems like the Golden Arches may be the first big sponsorship in the game, which means you basically have a Pokestop every you know 17 feet and a large McFry. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out when it's implemented, but uh, part of the charm of the game right now is the rarity of finding certain things out in the real world. Maybe the next thing they'll add more of the stuff they promised in all the trailers. I don't know. Features, gameplay, you know, whatever you got. Uh, could video game movies one day get an Oscar? Seems totally unlikely, given the candidates we've had so far, but uh, Jean-Julien Baronet, the former CEO of Ubisoft Motion Pictures, begs to differ. In a recent interview, the industry veteran said that from what he's seen at Ubisoft, anything is possible. Speaking with GameSpot, Baronet stated, you have a lot of themes that are very strong and universal. That could be a potential for a beautiful movie that wins an Oscar. I totally believe that. Considering Ubisoft recently said they don't expect Assassin's Creed movie to make any money anyway, not sure if that's going to be happening anytime soon. But hey, you know, they'll have plenty of other chances going for Oscars or money, since you've got movie deals out the wazoo for The Division, Splinter Cell, Rabbids, Watch Dogs, Far Cry, Ghost Recon, and I mean, let's be honest, the Rabbids definitely have an Oscar shot. Well, whether or not the Warcraft movie will be winning any Oscars come 2017, and let's be honest, it's not. Uh, it never completely really found its audience here in the States. But despite doing huge box office business in China, it seems like Warcraft won't be making its money back after all. The Hollywood Reporter is reporting that when all is said and done, Warcraft will probably lose somewhere around $15 million. Yes, that's even with it having the largest foreign debut in China's box office history, totaling around $430 million in sales. So it seems that we probably won't get a Warcraft movie sequel, which the first movie worked pretty hard to set up. Some would say almost at the expense of, you know, making an actual first movie. But, uh, you know, crazier sequels have been made before, so we'll just have to see uh, how that comes out. I mean, I'm looking at you, Resident Evil series of movies. Did the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter photograph Morse code on the surface of Mars? Hmm. Sorry, conspiracy theorists, we'll jump right to the no. Uh, it absolutely didn't. The internet just lost its mind when recent pictures were published of the North Martian pole that, to some, 
appeared to show a series of Morse code style dots and dashes across the Martian landscape. For people who desperately believe the truth is out there, it seemed like a possible attempt at communication from an alien life form. However, the markings are actually created by wind coming in from various directions in a large crater, which form long sculpted lines over time. Besides, uh, when you translate all those dots and dashes, it probably just says something like, hey, you kids, stop playing Pokemon Go. The Mars is a crotch to the old man. He doesn't like you on your sidewalk. Is the robot uprising already happening? A security robot at Stanford Shopping Center in California is in some trouble after it knocked a 16 month old down and ran over his foot. Gotta put him down. Fortunately for everyone involved, the robot didn't cause any serious damage, which is good considering it weighs about 300 pounds. Uh, but now the parents are hoping to warn other shoppers of the dangerous robot. Nightscope, the security robot's creators, said that uh, this was a freakish accident and that over 25,000 miles have been traveled by its robots so far without any incident whatsoever. Nonetheless, the Stanford Shopping Center has suspended the robot in question. I need your badge and your tread and your AI. And maybe your gun. Is, did they give it a gun? That that can't be safe. That's okay. Hopefully the robot doesn't have a taste for blood now. I mean, let's be honest. It should. 16 months old. That's It's like veal. Uh, well, that does it for our roundup today. Uh, let us know what you think about bloodthirsty robots, Morse code on Mars, and the mini NES down in the comments. And for future updates, and, you know, from every corner of the internet, like this video and subscribe to the know. Maybe I'll be here then, too. They even warn players that they should be careful with their Steam library. Uh, uh, one weekend is Pokemon Go already selling out? Uh, according to New York Times, Nian Niantic. Okay. One weekend, Pokemon Go. Pokemon. That shouldn't be too big of a surprise. It's not. 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 Is that supposed to be a double negative? I don't think so. It's not. Not. It's not. It's not, not only enough. Yeah, it's not only an opportunity. Okay.